to sing a hymn before I go on. It's going to be the special hymn of this retreat. In your program, you will see, I think, the last page, the old rugged cross. That's our special hymn for this conference. I will sing it, will pray it, will desire it. Hallelujah. So I don't know what to give us the tune.
joy in a moment that this meeting will produce an encounter an encounter with the cross an encounter an encounter an experience That the Lord will draw us to his cross. Wherever you are connected to this meeting. It is the mind of God. That we should come back to the cross. Father, we bow before tonight. We bow before you, the almighty God, the awesome God. Thank you for the mystery of the cross. Even as we spend these days in your presence I pray that there will be a revelation an encounter an experience oh father cause us to experience the cross afresh in a new way in a new dimension that by the power of the sacrifice of the cross you will prevail in this meeting every power every opposing force we send the blood of the cross against tonight and we command your yoke broken we command your hindrance taken out of the way we proclaim victory of the cross we proclaim the victory of the cross Rimo Shataya thank you mighty God cause your word to have an entrance a free access into the hearts of your people wherever they are connected to this service be thou glorified in Jesus name please be seated like I mentioned the focus of this retreat which is going to be the focus of our retreats is encounter of the cross. Now the cross is not only a symbol of our faith but it is the center of our faith what happened at the cross is the center of our faith when you remove the cross Our faith is not different from any other religion. When you remove the cross and the work of the cross from the Bible, the Bible is not different from any other inspirational book. 
So the cross is there at the center of our faith. The cross is also at the center of all the account of scripture. Because from the Old Testament, God was preparing the ground and pointing men and women to the cross. We'll see some of the application as we go on in this meeting. So, the emphasis we are making is very critical and I pray that God will open our eyes even though the scriptures may be familiar that it will carry a fresh message so for us as individuals all, there is nothing that can replace the cross in our lives nothing nothing can be a substitute to the cross if my faith can carry meaning that's why as we come to this meeting it's my prayer that everyone will come with a hunger with a desire of a fresh experience the real understanding of what was accomplished on the cross you know when we maybe let's start reading from first corinthians chapter one Paul was speaking about the cross. I'll read verses 17 and 18. He said, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, there are a few things I want to draw our attention. We are just trying to lay a foundation. First of all, Paul said, I was not sent to baptize. Not that baptism is bad. But he was trying to say that his primary mission was to preach. Because without preaching, there is no significant baptism. Am I right? So he said his primary mission was to preach. But he made an emphasis there. He said, even the preaching is not in the wisdom of what? Men. So that the cross will not become of no effect. That means that Paul so understood the power of the cross that anything that would try to undermine the effect of the cross, anything that would try to overshadow the effect of the cross, Paul avoided it. He said, I'm not going to preach with wisdom so that it will not make the cross of no one effect because if you just preach with wisdom and the effect of the cross is not in the preaching 
I don't know whether it will even be as strong as Shakespeare. I don't know how many of you have read Shakespeare. You know, he has a lot of writing and wisdom and all that. But it does not have effect to transform life. You know why? There is no cross in it. No cross in it. And then he went to verse 19. He, in verse 18, he made another emphasis. He said, he said, for the message of the cross. And that's the message we are going to be preaching this weekend. The message of what? There is a message called what? The message of what? The cross. He said the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are what? Perishing. Another way I can put it is that any man who does not take the message of the cross seriously is what? Is perishing. When the message of the cross does not carry the weight that is supposed to be placed, he said, for those who are perishing, it is what? Foolishness. It makes no meaning. So even me as a believer, if I don't take the message and the word of the cross seriously, then I'm treading on the wrong path. The path of those who are what? Perishing. He said, for those of us who are being saved, it is what? The power of God. That means for God to save any man, it must be by the cross. When you remove the cross, it's like you render God powerless in the process of saving man. So, the cross is at the center of our faith. And you know something? The cross also is also critical in history. Many of us have heard of BC and AD. Am I right? In counting years, they talk about BC, meaning before Christ. And then AD, AD is an, a Latin word meaning Anno Domini, which means in the year of the Lord. So like this year is AD 2021. So what it means is in the year of who? The law 2000 and what 21. Now, how did it become the year of the law after the experience of the cross? The world started measuring years with the Lord. So they started measuring everything in history is now being measured. So any man who counts AD 2021 is inadvertently saying that something happened some over 2,000 what years ago. So unconsciously, even our calendar is preaching about the cross. 
It changed the date of history. So most calendars are now using AD. So even the unbelieving nations and older is on record that the cross affected the way we count years. So the cross is a measure of distance. So even in our lives, while the one of the war is counting how many years after the experience, for us is the cross measures how close we are to God. How close we are to God. Our distance to the cross measures our significance. Significance to God and significance in eternity. Now tonight, I'll be dwelling on a scripture because we're going to be looking at Christ our substitute and the emphasis I will be making is for us to try to understand an aspect of the mystery of the cross second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 that is the principal scripture we shall be considering. He said, For he made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. For he made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God. This is one scripture that summarizes the mystery of redemption. It summarizes the mystery of redemption. And we are going to try this evening to break down that scripture. We we'll take it phrase by phrase. The first thing I want to look at is that he made him to be seen. The idea was referring to God the Father and him referring to Jesus, God the Son. So he said he made Jesus to be seen. Why did God decide to do that? Now when he says he made him to be seen, let me quickly say is that he made him to become the payment for sin. He made him to become the payment for sin. That means That Jesus Christ is revealed in that scripture as our sin offering. I'm going to talk a little about sin offering. Now, looking at the scripture. 
future because of the limited time we have I'll share a few things about sin offering in the Old Testament one of the ways to have for any sin to have a closure in the Old Testament to be covered one of the ways is to offer what? a sin offering that means that without a sin offering there is no closure for the sin now the thing we must get right from this onset is that God had never played with the issue of sin I don't know why somebody is hearing me right from the Old Testament God you know the Bible says that his eyes are too righteous to do what? to behold iniquity now one of the things the cross we convey to every one of us is how serious sin is today in the war and even in the church men are playing around with sin as if it does not matter men are underestimating sin if there is one truth God should open your eyes and my eyes to this night is to see how serious sin is that's why when you find anywhere that men undermine sin make it to look like it doesn't exist it is a strategy of the devil even if it's a church it is a strategy of the devil you know when John was writing he said my little children I write unto you that you do what? sin not but if for any reason you fall into sin what should happen? he said we have an advocate that means if there is no advocate sin will stand against you are you hearing me that means that when I sin even though today as a believer if there were no advocate you know who is an advocate advocate is like a lawyer am I right pleading your work your case before what a judge that means God will judge every sin if the advocate does not intervene so from the Old Testament God had to make a provision for a sin offering there are several offerings burnt offering most of them trespass offering all of them related but here it talked about the sin offering and even for the priest to enter the holy of holies the Bible told us that he cannot do it without what? A sacrifice. That sacrifice is what? A sin offering. That means 
for you to have access to the presence of God, there must be what? A sin offering. I want you to understand. God started it in the Old Testament. It was like a demonstration of where he was going to. And what they did was it became a ritual. Somebody was seen. You can't get an animal. The animal that did not sin will pay the price and the sin will be covered. God was only drawing the attention to make them know that he does not play with sin. So we find Jesus here as our sin offering. And you can read more about the sin offering in Leviticus chapter 4 and Leviticus chapter 16. Because of time, I don't want to go into all that. But it is one of the few offerings that is permitted in the Holy of Holies. The blood will go into the Holy of Holies. They will burn the fact before the altar. And that sin offering was to make an atonement. Atonement is simply the state of being one. To make us one with God. To make somebody one with God. To reconcile someone to God. Another meaning of atonement which those sacrifices stand for is that it makes satisfaction for man's offenses. That's what we call propitiation. To make satisfaction for his offenses. To satisfy the demands of the law and the justice of God. When there is sin, there must be a satisfaction of the demands of the law and the justice of God. That's why those sacrifices were being made. And when you read in Leviticus 4, you discover that the sacrifice at that time, they were categorized. They, if you are a priest, your own sacrifice is different. If it is a congregation, it's different. If it's a king, it's different. If it's a common man, it's different. And so, sin offering. Now, there's one thing that happens with the sin offering before we leave that. Is that the man who is making the sacrifice when they bring the animal, he will put his hand on top of the head of what? The animal. Signifying that I am taking responsibility of what? The sin. And two, I am transferring my sin to what? To the animal. So if you don't put your hand on the animal and they kill it even though it has been killed it will not stand for you I want us to take note of these things so you must relate with the sacrifice for that sacrifice does affect you it's not our sacrifice you, it must, you must relate Lay your hand. Put your weight upon that animal. It carries the burden for you. It is then that when it is killed, then it will take care and address your situation. That's what Isaiah was speaking when he said in 
Isaiah 53, if you look specifically to verse 6, the Bible says, All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the what? The iniquity of what? Us all. The Lord has laid on him just like the sinner lays his hand on the animal for sacrifice. He said the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of what? Us all. Now let me quickly look at the character of the sin offering. One of those major things they used for sin offering was a young bullock. Bullock is a group of animals where you have cow and most of these other groups. It's a young bullock, or you can call it bull, without blemish. Young means is of full of strength and what? Vigor. And can you reflect at the age when Jesus died? Jesus died at what? About 33. Am I right? That means it was not just a coincidence. He needed to be what? A young bullock. Full of strength and full of what? Vigor. And the time Jesus died was at 33. A man is what? Full of strength. And do you know that when you go and begin to see, when he died on the cross, he, he did not die, die because of the torture and all that. You remember that at the last moment before he was to take his bread, the Bible says he cried loud. Am I right? A man crying loud is not a sign that he had no strength. Even at the point he was dying, he was still full of what? Strength. The second character is that he is with he said without blemish. That means there will be no fault. Any slightest fault would disqualify him. Any slightest fault. And when you look at Jesus also, we discover that he was born without sin. He lived without a fault. That even when the prince of this world, he said, the prince of this world are coming, but they find what? Nothing in me. They find nothing. In fact, Hebrews 4 gave us, Hebrews 4, 15, gave us a summary of what the state of Jesus. Hebrews 4, 15. He said, for we do not have a high priest who cannot, cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points did what tempted as we are yet without sin hallelujah he was tempted there is no temptation that you face today he said he was tempted at all points but yet what without sin because that bullock that lamb must be without what blemish no spot no blemish no moral failure no stain 
No blame. So he reveals the quality of the offering. And that's why First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 brought out the quality of the sacrifice. The price that was paid for my redemption. The price that was paid for your redemption. First Peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. It's annoying that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like what? Silver or gold. From your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without what? blemish and without what spot Peter was trying to bring how precious how precious the prize that redeemed us he said you were not redeemed from corruptible things like silver and what gold that means that our the blood that redeemed us is priceless. You can't put a price on it. Now, when you have something that is precious, how do you handle it? Do you treat it carelessly? Eh? You place value on it. Many believers, yes, they are born again, but they don't realize what it cost the Son of God to redeem them. They don't place value. He said, You were redeemed. You know, we don't have time. We will refer to so many other scriptures. He said, you are not your own. You were bought with what? A price. And what is that price? The precious blood of what? Of Jesus. A sinless blood. The whole world could not find that kind of blood. And God has to send his only one, son. Because that blood could not be found anywhere. That is the price for my redemption. If there is one emphasis the spirit of God wants to make this night, if I should place a price on your word, redemption, if you take it seriously, your lifestyle will change. Your commitment will change. Everything about you will do what? Will change. I'm sure sometimes when God will look from heaven and see some of us, He will be wondering, did God know what it cost me? It cost my only son. His life to redeem. And look at. So that is the character of that sacrifice. I will quickly move to bring out two more lessons from that scripture before we conclude tonight. So we have said he was made sin and we have explained that that means he became a payment for sin. He himself did not sin. He himself had no sin. But he had to become a payment for sin. And the Bible says 
for us he was made sin for who for me and that brings us to the title of the message Christ our what substitute a substitute is something that takes the place of another so that means him dying he was taking my place I will quickly share with you or show you in the scripture a few examples of substitutes in the Bible the first one you find it in the story in Genesis 22 I'll just tell you the story because of time Genesis 22 God told Abraham that he wanted a sacrifice from him and God defined the sacrifice and the definition was offered to me your, your son your only son the one whom thou love it so the vision was clear offered to me Isaac Abraham had waited for Isaac for 25 years Sarah got Isaac at a time that humanly it was impossible and God said go and sacrifice the same Isaac on a mountain that will show you God was to show us something that he was about to do he was to show us maybe to Abraham how costly the price he will pay you will be Abraham being a man that have walked close with God he obeyed I, I, I won't tell you what was going on in his mind it's only him that will tell us maybe in eternity he did not even tell the wife I'm just wondering what would have happened if actually he executed it and he came back and told Sarah that God told me and I have sacrificed Isaac. I'm sure Sarah would have divorced him. Don't you agree with me? In fact, he will even tell him that it's not God speaking. I can. To show the seriousness, he just carried Isaac going. But inside his mind, it was that price was too much. In fact, he would have been saying, ah, God, why didn't you ask for me? Because Isaac was more precious than his own life. And they walked there. He prepared everything. Carried fire, carried knife. At a point, he asked Isaac. Isaac asked, ah, Daddy, this kind of sacrifice we are going now. Everything is there. Where is the lamb? He said, don't worry. God will supply the lamb for what? For sacrifice. Isaac didn't know that he was the lamb. Now, let's not di digress too much. And when he now got to that place, put Isaac there, tied him. You know, Isaac did not get covenant cheaply. When you lie there with the knife up, you will now know why Isaac had to enjoy the things he did what he enjoyed. The price of covenant does not come cheap. Many of us are looking for blessings of Abraham. But you are not ready to pay what? The price. They will tell you, not another person, your father. Say he heard from God, tie you, put on the altar, carry knife up. And Isaac surrendered. As he carried the knife, about to bring down, God says, stop there. You have already given the sacrifice. He said, now I know. It's now I know. Hey, for many of us, God is not looking at you. 
this one. And he now told him, when he now stopped, he turned, he saw a ram caught by what? A ticket. It was a divine ram. Ram don't roam about like that in the bush and caught, tied, waiting for you. He now used it. So that ram became a substitute for what? As the ram was dying, Isaac was not looking. It's me that is dying like this. So. Substitute. Another way it happened in scripture, in Egypt, when you read Exodus 20, 12, you find that before the Passover lamb, God said, I'm going to visit Egypt. And when I visit Egypt with judgment, every firstborn male of man and woman will, be what, will do what? Will die. And God said, okay. Because I want to separate my people, I'll provide them a substitute. He told them, even before the, anim the, the angel of judgment will come, every family, do what? Take a lamb. Kill it. Eat. That lamb was becoming a substitute for this ball that should have died of both man and what? Animal. That was why when the angel of death came, he could not touch them. Because their own substitute have already done what? Died. I can give you on and on, but because of time, let's move. So those were temporary substitutes. There's an, another kind of substitute. Let me just quickly show you in the New Testament. When you read Luke chapter 10, you find a story we normally call the Good Samaritan. We find that the Good Samaritan he was traveling and he was wounded so badly and then the Samaritan came and what did he do? He bound him carried him to an inn and said whatever paid something and he said anything extra on my own account he provided for the wounded traveler. It was a picture of Christ coming for our rescue. But the real substitute was Christ. That's why in John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for what? The sheep. In the Old Testament, the sheep died for the shepherd. But the, in the New Testament, the substitute for us, the shepherd died for what? The sheep. The shepherd died for what? The sheep. Can you imagine that? Just relate that. The shepherd giving his life for the sheep. I don't have time. I will have analyzed a little Hebrews 10 for us. Particularly verses 8 to 22. But time is not in our favor. I still want to make one or two points before we pray tonight but you can go there Jesus was speaking it was analyzing the sacrifice of Jesus when he said lo I came in the volume that is written concerning me to do your will oh God and when you read further you see all the things that he had to fulfill as a sacrifice so Christ by the cross became our substitute. Then, the 
the next phrase we are still looking at first corinthians 5 second corinthians 5 21 he said that we might become the righteousness of god now it brings another phrase another vocabulary in salvation which is called imputation to input now the to input is the act of one person adding something good or bad to the account of what another to add something good or bad to the account of what another person it is called imputation that is to input so there was a divine exchange we also find it in scripture it started with adam adam sinned and what did god do god imputed the sin upon every human race am i right so that means as soon as adam sinned there was an alert that in the spiritual realm was inputted in spiritual computer that as soon as you are born the sin of adam is done what put in your account debited for you as soon as you enter this war the thing is transferred into your account so you use every man starts life on a minus indebted to the sin the nature we inherited it that's why when you read Romans 5 12 he said for all has done what has sinned and come short of the glory of God in 1 Corinthians 15 22 he said in Adam all died all that's why when you come and say hey, I came out from a, a Christian family I, I, I was raised in a Christian family even if that your Christian family is great evangelism, that, that credit or sin is what? It's already there. Nobody wipes it out because of who born you. No. He said in Adam, all oh, died. And the consequences are there. So if I must change my account, it is something I will do consciously. Then the second imputation was the one that God did. He carried the sin of the whole race of humanity and put it in the account of who? Christ, Jesus Christ. That is the one I read for you in Isaiah 53. If you read verse 55, verse 5. But maybe let's just look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Hebrews 2, verse 9. All we are trying to do tonight is to see how serious the work of the cross is. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 He said But we see Jesus Who was made a little lower Than the angels For the suffering of death Crowned with glory And honor 
that he, by the grace of God, might test death for how many people? Everyone. He tested death for everyone. And in First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, the Bible says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that's the cross, that we, having died to sins, might live for what? Righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. So we find imputation of Adam to humanity and then from humanity to Jesus. The first one was unwillingly. That means if I had a choice for the sin to be credited to my account, do you think I will agree? So we had no choice. But when it comes to Jesus, he made a choice. He willingly offered. That's why I was, I read for you, I know I quoted for you Hebrews 10. He said, Lo, I come in the volume that is written of me. I volunteer. I volunteer to carry all the burden of their sin. He volunteered. He volunteered to drink my cup. You know, when he was going to the cross at that Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it's possible, I want this cup to do what? It was a dreaded cup. But he said, not my will. Let your will be done. He volunteered to take my cup now what is the product of it and that's why we're going to close what is the product of this he said that we might become what the righteousness of God all I'm, I've been trying to describe is the means to attain righteousness. What God had to do so that man can have a right standing with him. All that Jesus did on the cross is the only way Man can have a right standing with him. Without it, there cannot be righteousness. At best, it will be self-righteousness. I know how Isaiah described it. He said, all our righteousness is what? It's like a filthy rag. There is a divine righteousness which God has procured for us. And that righteousness can only be received at where? The cross. It can only be received and maintained by the cross. Today there is an abuse of that righteousness. But I'm going to read a scripture for you quickly so that we can close. I will read the verse 21 of our main text. But I'm going to read it in the amplified version, the classic amplified version. There are some elements it brought which I'm going to emphasize briefly and then we will start 
to pray. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 The Bible says For our sake He made Christ Virtually to be seen Who knew no sin So that in and through him we might become he tried to define the become and deal with viewed as being in and examples of the righteousness of what God. I can stop there. Three things about this righteousness. He said, first, he became sin that did not know sin so that in him and through him me and you that believe will be endued with what? Righteousness. Will be clothed. So, we don't get righteousness that we are talking about by works. Am I right? The Bible says it is not by works. Less what? Any man should boast. It is endued. We are clothed. As soon as you identify with the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Just like the animal. When you place your head on your hand on the animal. The animal takes your place. So this is a, what we do. It's not placing physical hand. But we place our heart on who? Jesus. He takes my place that sacrifice on the cross now count for me and one of the things I get automatically is that God clothes me with what? righteousness so in him when, he, when I'm in him now he sees me as what? a righteous man in him him that means as soon as I separate myself from him what happens I lose my righteousness because the God sees me through what the telescope of who of Christ are you hearing me that's why when he says abide in me he knows what he's talking about we don't have time to analyze so many scriptures that are linked. So, he endure. Then, he now said, in that same, let me read it again for you. He said, that we may be endued with, viewed as being in. So, it's like, the lens, God looks at me, is the lens of who? So when he wears the goggle of Jesus, he sees me as what? That means if I get out of the radar of Jesus, nothing. Then the third one is that we become what? Examples exhibitors of what? Righteousness. That is the error of this great revolution people today. Because they say, ah, it's not works. So I've received righteousness. I can now live anyhow. No, it's not possible. I will cling to where? 
the old rugged cross, I will cling to the sacrifice. So I become an example because God is looking for people who can exhibit his righteousness. That it is possible to live in this world and be like him. It's possible. So you become an example. So when they want to see the righteousness of Jesus, they look at you. They see it. You say, this is my ah. You know, that means that God wants every one of us to be a model of what? Righteousness. You know, when designers make dress, they look for who? Models who will exhibit it. Heaven is looking for models of righteousness. The cross made it possible. The cross made it possible. And that's why when we say we have to return and encounter the cross, we are trying to examine all that the cross stands for. And I want to look at my life. What picture am I showing? What am I exhibiting? Is it the flesh? Is it the flesh? Is it carnality? Just that you are a Christian is not automatic. Because when you go to that same Corinthians, chapter 3, Paul was writing. He said, I can address you as what? Spiritual. But as what? Canals. People that are exhibiting flesh. Instead of being examples of the righteousness of God, they become examples of the flesh. And the emphasis is it is in him and through him. That means we must remain in union with him. Jesus became on the cross what he was not sin he was not sin but on the cross he became sin that we might we that we will become what we were not and that is what righteousness we were not righteous but the cross Procured righteousness for us. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men can become what? The Son of God. That is the mystery of the cross. That is the mystery of the cross. I don't know where you stand this night. As we want to pray. For many. You have not laid hand. On the animal for the sacrifice. Remember I told you. For the sacrifice to speak for you. You must do what? You must place your hand on it. That means that for the cross to speak for me, the price has been paid, the blood has been shed, but I must personally identify with it, with my heart, as I get, I say, Lord, you did this for me. You that knew sin became sin for me. I identify with this death. That is where redemption starts. And when that happens, something happens in the realm of the spirit. A transformation takes place in your life. You become, the Bible says, if any man is in what? In Christ. That's where the text we started with that's part of where he started. 
He said he becomes a new creation. All things what? Passes away. It is because the only thing that can settle the issue of our sin. I described for you that sin is a serious matter before God. Today people can laugh about sin. People can play around about sin. Make jest about sin. But God has never and he will not. And that's why you must identify where you stand tonight. And for you. Who have made that decision. Are you still standing? We are the lens of Jesus. Where God can see you through the lens of Jesus. Or is it I come, receive you, I live on my own. I live, we don't have time, we'll have looked at some other scriptures, but we're just trying to start building tonight. God will help us as we progress to look at some other issues arising from where we are coming from. So which lens is God seeing you from? When you stand on your own, when you are not in him, when you don't abide in him, when you don't remain in him, you lose that lens that will capture you. You will be standing on your own. This night, we are going to pray a prayer. First, you have not truly identified with this work of the cross. You know your life shows it because you can't be continuing in sin and say you have identified no. And this night you want to take a step and say, Let Lord Jesus, Jesus, no, you say, Father, Jesus became a sin offering for me, He took my place, suffered, and died. I want to identify with it. That's the first prayer we're going to pray this night. And close to that, some of us will have left the place of the cross. There is so much distance between you and the cross. Your life is showing it. Your dedication is showing it. Your devotion, prayer life, the war, testimony is showing it. And you're saying, Lord, I return. Whichever class you fall, I want you to stand on your feet as we pray, even this evening. We're going to take this anywhere you are. Whichever, just stand on your feet. You fall into any of that group. Stand. On a hill, far away, Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dear rest and best for the world of all sinners was slain. So I will cherish, cherish the old rugged cross till my, my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. That is your prayer tonight. You want to give your life to Jesus, or you want to rededicate yourself. You know you are far from the cross. You can just walk out. 
as we take the as refrain once one more time so i will cherish the old rugged cross you can just step out you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate yourself i will cling to the old rugged cross a great price was paid please come please come you want to rededicate yourself to him is it time we want to go back to the cross nothing to hide nothing to hide that's why we are here this weekend I will grieve anywhere you are can you talk to God talk to God it's a meeting to encounter him you know where you stand you know how you have treated the sacrifice you know how you are made in sunlight many of us think and behave as it were the price that was paid for us was cheap to God cry to him you are still struggling with sin are you saying that that precious blood cannot settle it please dear it's a moment it's a time to be open it's a time to drop our trophy down talk to him if you feel like crying go ahead and cry even Jesus on the cross he cried out for me and you he cried out the cross Maria Labo Shata Thank you Jesus mm, glory
Glory to God. Glory to God. Makashataya. Thank you because your blood still speaks today. It still speaks today. It still speaks today. And it shall speak tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm going to pray for you. First of all, for these ones that are here. Just put your hand on your right hand on your chest. And say this prayer with me. Whether you are making a first decision or rededicating yourself. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight. I have seen what it cost you to save me. The price that you paid this evening. I embrace that sacrifice. Bless my spiritual hands upon the lamb that was slain. And I ask, oh God, that you forgive me my sins. Redeem me from my backsliding. Everything that have kept me a distance from the cross. I renounce it tonight. And I come to the foot of the cross. And I cling to the cross tonight. Let the power of the cross rest upon my life tonight. Come on, shut up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the power of the cross avail for your children. Wherever they are connected to this meeting. As many, oh God, as have stepped out for a fresh experience of the cross. I pray that your power even that power that was released by the cross will avail for them now. Let there be a fresh working upon their lives. That the grace which only the cross releases will come upon them. The righteousness which only the cross alone endures will rest upon them. Thank you, Father. We give you glory tonight. We give you glory tonight. May their lives never be the same again. Oh God, may their spiritual experience be transformed. May it be transformed. Where they have struggled, let help come. Let help come. Let help come. I pray for these ones and for everyone who have been part of this meeting. We are meant to be exhibits of your righteousness, examples of your righteousness. Oh God, our Father, I pray, mighty God. The help will come tonight that we shall be transformed. We shall be transformed. The God, as we leave this meeting, we shall exhibit you. 
we shall exhibit your righteousness thank you father I pray that the Holy Spirit will apply these words specifically to our situations that those who are made light of the price you paid that by reason of the revelation of your word may there be a transformation in our understanding may there be a transformation in our commitment to you almighty God oh God it's a greater love as no man than this that a man would die for his friends you have shown all the greatest love I pray that will arise of this, out of this meeting appreciating this love and responding to this love thank you for all that the cross stood for Mashata. all that he stood for everything was settled there every price was paid every yoke was broken there by his stripes healing was made possible in this meeting every man that comes sick will go home healed by the power released on the cross may healing reach out to every man by the power released on the cross may deliverance be your portion that those things that are tied to you the chains be broken tonight let the captive be set free let the captive be set free bring us into unique and diverse encounter even the encounter of the cross that in the name of the lord be glorified our father in jesus name and amen